One, two, three, four. There's never been an astronaut quite like Chris Hadfield. The 53-year-old Canadian has wowed the world from orbit, just as he thrilled these Toronto students last week. His 750,000 Twitter followers saw spectacular photos of Earth, and he shared almost daily insights into zero-gravity life. This is Shatner. Do you hear me? In one memorable video, he joked with William Shatner, the Canadian actor who played Captain Kirk on the 1960s TV show Star Trek. But all you have to do is flip yourself upside down. With Hadfield's mission ending, attention now turns to the next Canadian astronauts. Two of them are in training right now. But there's a problem. The cost of a Russian rocket trip to the International Space Station is about a fifth of Canada's entire space budget. There are no plans at all for the new astronauts to go aloft. I can only hypothesize at the moment, but I know our goal is to continue to fly Canadians in space. So we're looking for our next opportunity, but we have to determine when that will be. Canada is proud of its role in space exploration, from its first satellite, Alouette, in 1962, to the Toronto-built robotic arm in the shuttle. But many here are wondering, with budget cuts and an apparent lack of political interest, does the country have a future in space? Canadian space uh, program for whatever you might want to define it as it is right now, it is really at a crossroads. I mean, it, it is looking for direction uh, from the top to get those um, priorities sort of decided upon so that we have adequate guidance for academia, for industry, and, and for the space agency itself. Canadian universities and businesses are moving ahead on their own. They're sending satellites up on Indian rockets and making lucrative technology deals with other countries' space programs. Chris Hadfield made space cool in Canada. The country's waiting to see if the government even tries to take advantage of that. Daniel Lack, Al Jazeera, Toronto.